Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. In New York, call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY, that's 467-369. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly on behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort in Kansas. 21 plus age and eligibility varies by jurisdiction. Void in New Hampshire, Oregon, and Ontario. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. For additional terms and responsible gaming resources, see dkng.co slash football. Right again, everybody. Welcome again to Bear Bets, presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. Score big with DraftKings Sportsbook, the best place to bet touchdowns. Download the DK Sportsbook app and use the code BEARBETS. Go to BEARBETS, two words, for new customers to get $200 uh, in bonus bets. I'm the Bear, Chris Flika, joined again by Jeff Schwartz, Sammy P, Will Hill. will join us again in the gambling group chat coming up later on. I guess the biggest story in the uh, the college football world is the f- initial reveal of the college football playoff rankings, and I don't think there were really any surprises, uh, Jeff, as to yeah. where certain teams were. It, it kind of mirrors the AP poll, which a lot of times it typically doesn't. I mean, I mean Georgia was third behind Ohio yeah. State in the playoff rankings, and it's flipped in the in the AP poll. People, I think, are still trying to make a case that BYU should be ranked higher, Indiana should be ranked higher. But I will say this: like, I don't know why Penn State is ranked ahead of Tennessee or, or even Indiana. Like, like, what has Penn State done? I mean, look, watching this team on the field, like offensively, uh, they have a ton of problems. I mean, who, who have they beaten? They beat they beat yeah. Illinois and USC. Like, I don't know. I, I, I look, I have a Penn State team but ticket to make the playoff, and uh, just a bunch of empty calorie wins for them. And they're probably going to wind up a 10 and one and in the playoff, but really no, nothing that in a 12 team yeah. playoff, there's so much runway left in the field. It's really nothing to really get fired up. About oh no, there is Barry. You have to be angry. About the play. Hey, be angry, be angry about the 12 team playoff because guess what? They, they're never going to change for the entire month of, of November, the standings are never going to change, Bear. Nothing's going to ever happen. <laughs> we do this every year, no, right? Maybe. Every year, I've been on the radio during this during this time on on the Tuesday of the first CFP rankings, and all and all we do is we complain and whine and, and moan about the rankings. And guess what? I say the same thing every year. It will figure itself out because all these teams play each other, right? They're going to play. There's opportunities to show if you're good or not based off your schedule. So look, yeah, Indiana, you want to be higher? I agree with you. Guess what? You beat Michigan, you beat Ohio State, you're going to be in, 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 in not only will you be in the playoff, you'll be in the Big Ten Championship game. You can have a, you can have a bye. Like, you, you work it out. It's, you have time to figure it out. And so, yeah, this is just a general snapshot of where teams are at. You know, if you're AM at 14, you beat Texas in the week of the season, you're in the playoff. If you're, you know, if you're SMU, we just, we'll talk about it in the game group chat. Win the ACC or at least get in, the, in you know to the ACC championship game. Like to me, it's not that complicated. Bear, a lot of teams have a path to where they want to end up. Um, it, I will say from the like Oregon perspective, it's kind of nice having some some Big Ten bias for once. Where Ohio State <laughs> is now is now two. I thought they wouldn't surpass Georgia, but obviously a win against Penn State looks good. But I would say Georgia beating Texas is sort of a better win. Uh, but Georgia has the worst loss, I guess you would say. Um, Penn State being six to your point. I'm looking at it now, I mean that's. I, I don't even think I, I might even put them like eleven or twelve. I, I, I still think I've never been high on Penn State this season. The one opportunity they had bear against a ranked team like Ohio State, they didn't score an offensive touchdown. You know, like you kind of get knocked in my book um, if if it, you know if, if you do that. So look, I think to me that the teams that are outside that can get back in to the playoff, and obviously in the Big Twelve. You know, Kansas State, Colorado. Colorado has the inside edge on that because Kansas State has two conference losses. Uh, Iowa State, seventeen. Again, you, you're playing the Big Ten, Big Twelve championship game. You're, you're in. And I think A and M, A and M to me feels most realistic at fourteen to move up in the top twelve with, with a win over Texas if they get that win uh, in the final week of the season to be a playoff team. I think the question that you posed on social media last night is worth discussing. Bear, Boise State is twelve. They're seven to one. They're not going to lose. Look at their schedule. They're not going to lose. There were 12, so. 
We don't think so. College football is, is, is in weird in November. To be fair, it's weird in November. But let's say they, they win. As of right now, they'd actually played Colorado State, not UNLV, in the Mountain West Championship game. They're not beating, they're not losing Colorado State. A 12, 13 and 1, Boise State. It will be 12 1. 12 1, Boise State, oh. with a three point loss at Oregon. Could they have a, the four seed essentially? Could, could they surpass the Big 12 champion and get a first round bye? I, th- I think they very easily could. I, I think if you look at where they are right now, ranked three, just three spots behind BYU, who is right now the lowest ranked uh, uh, Big 12 or Power 4 champion, I, I think it's very realistic to see a potential flip there because I think people are still holding on to some preseason priors on BYU. They're, they're thinking the team is not good. But, yeah, and look, yes, they did get very fortunate. Uh, in beating SMU, they did get very fortunate in beating an Oklahoma State team, which hasn't won a Big 12 champion conference game. Uh, they were in a game with Kansas State where the box score really did not indicate what the, the score of that game. It was completely opposite of what uh, the box score kind of said it should be. It was kind of this like seven, five minute avalanche of points that the BYU put on the board. So I think there is a very good chance that Boise could be the four. And then the five seed potentially could be looking at the Big 12 champion, whether it's Boise, BYU, Kansas State, Colorado, whomever, uh, in, in a 5-12 game. And then if they're able to get past that, you're looking at Boise State hosting uh, and, and a, uh, being on the, the number four seed and taking on the, uh, the five seed, one of those uh, – New Year's six type ish type bowl. So uh, I think it is a possibility. And I would, if to answer the previous question as well, you mentioned the Big 12 teams. I think Ole Miss is a team that could potentially work itself into college football playoff top 12 position as well. We're going to talk a little bit about that more. Sammy P and Will, the gambling group chat. Gambling group chat is back once again. Myself and Jeff joined by Sammy P and Will Hill as we are. Uh, every single week. It seems like the center of the college football world this week uh, is around the SEC. Not a ton of ranked matchups this week, just two. And both of them are in the SEC with Alabama going to LSU and number two, Georgia going to Ole Miss. And that's where I think is a good enough spot uh, as any to to kick the chat off here. Uh, Bulldogs, two and a half, three in some places, total around uh, 55. Bunch of streaks on the line here for the Bulldogs. 52 straight wins against teams named something other than Alabama, dating back to a 2020 loss against Florida, and then also 18 straight wins over ranked opponents not named Alabama, uh, dating back to that same 2020 win uh, against Florida. The Bulldogs got to take on a really good Ole Miss front lead the nation with 41 sacks and and Will, we've seen Carson Beck just look terrible. The last, uh, I think he has, what, three games now with at least three picks. Uh, continues to be a, a turnover machine. Their inability to run the ball and uh, and protection, I think, is going to be an issue this week. I, If I had to make a play on this game, I would lean towards taking all miss plus the points. Uh, are, are you there with the Rebels? Do you think the Bulldogs might bounce back? Is there something else you may be looking at playing there? Uh, I like the under, and there was some three and a halfs when this line popped up uh, at, at certain books, and that I think was, uh, you know, was pretty clearly the wrong number. Georgia probably shouldn't be laying three and a half on the road here. I, I just, I think Ole Miss is a little banged up on offense with Harris and the running back. And look, Georgia, I, I feel like Kirby Smart's going to go into this game and say, hey, I, I can't lose it with turnovers like I did against Alabama. Be a little conservative. They certainly miss McConkie and Bowers. They just don't have the usual firepowered offense that we're used to seeing from a Georgia team where it's just NFL player after NFL player. It's not that same time type, same uh, type of team in Ole Miss. I think the perception to them is basketball on grass. They're going to outscore you. But until last week, they haven't really exploded on offense in SEC play. And they've been really good on defense. Like you said, their front four, their front seven, really good. So to me, I don't know, like a 27, 24 type of game, 20, 23, 20. I just, I, I think for a, a lower scoring game. And I'm, I'm curious what you guys think. If Beck does throw one earlier, that does throw two in the first half, would they think about benching him? I, I don't, man, I, I just I don't think so. He, he's been so bad. He's been so erratic. I, I normally would take George in the spot just because it's Kirby Smart against Lane Kiffin. Beck makes it hard, really hard for me to back Georgia here, Sammy. Let me read you a snippet of a story I wrote in August of 2024. 
Dart is the perfect quarterback for Kiffin's explosive up-tempo offense, and he will put up Heisman numbers. Circle November 9 on your calendar. That's when Georgia goes to Oxford. Now, do I think Jackson Dart's going to win the Heisman? No. Although he did, Jeff, he did dip from 100 to 1 to 16 to 1 in one week after he had an explosion <laughs> last week. I don't think it's going to happen. My priors love Ole Miss in this spot. I'm scared of Georgia, though. I just am. I'm scared of that D. Ole Miss's line has not been solid. If all things went to plan and Dart threw for five touchdowns and became five to one to win the Heisman, I would then have Hunter and Ward and um, Jackson Dart. But and then I Dylan never Gabriel have, would win, right? I would of never have would. things that nice, Jeff. Ever. Of course, Dylan Gabriel would win. Um, here's my problem with with this matchup for for Georgia. I just don't think it's a good matchup for Georgia. Like it's it's kind of that simple. I, I know you don't want to get in front of that that train from from time to time, but Bear mentioned earlier, right? Georgia doesn't run the football well. And so that leads to them having to pass the ball more. But Carson Beck is not in a position right now for that to be the offense. That puts Georgia, they're 89th in the country, guys, on third down. Because typically now it's now, instead of being third and two, because they can't run the football, it's now third and long. Old Miss's defensive line, number one in the country in Havoc rate. It's a great defensive line. They, they, they get tackles for loss. They pressure the quarterback. They sack the quarterback. And on the other side, guys, Georgia right now, in the country, they're 111 in the country and passes defended, like deflected, like like getting in the way of another wide receiver. Well, guess what? Now you're facing an offense that wants to throw the football, right? That wants to get downfield, that wants to tempo you. I just feel like individual matchups in this game really go Ole Miss's favor. They're at home in this game. Again, do you want to get in front of the Georgia train? Do you want to take a worse number now in Ole Miss than you could have gotten earlier? I, I don't think those are great things. But the matchup itself, I think, favors Ole Miss to win outright. Yeah, and, and I certainly think um, injury news is going to be massive with, with, with like Will alluded to earlier. Uh, can Trey Harris play with us and play the last couple of weeks? Uh, how serious is Parrish's injury getting carted off last week? Really, I haven't seen at least anything about that. Without without those two guys, that certainly helps uh, Georgia's chances. But you, you would assume, again, I don't know how the severity of the Trey Harris's injury, what it, what it really is and how hurt he is, but you would think that if he has not played the last couple of weeks, they, they probably have had a little bit uh, filed away in the back of their mind, save him for for, for this game and, and perish without him. They turn into primarily a, a passing game. Anyway, uh, throw, throw this at you. If you think the Rebels can pull the upset off, is it worth playing maybe a, a, a future to win the SEC title on Ole Miss? Are you sure they would lose a tie break with LSU? But they would hold a tiebreak against Georgia, and then obviously you've got a And M, Tennessee, Texas with one loss as well. You, you think the path just might be too much for them to overcome? But you figure Georgia or Tennessee have to lose again, and uh, that, that pick up another two losses. It's uh, tennis, Texas and Texas A and M. Uh, one of those other teams are going to pick up another loss, being that they uh, play each other at the end of the year. Do, do and does anybody see a path potentially for the Rebels to get to the SEC title game? Uh, should they win here? Because because after this week, I mean, obviously the schedule get let, lets up dramatically. We got uh, a road game at Florida, which I'm sure a lot of Florida fans will be uh, interested in Lane Kiffin, and then uh, then Mississippi State is the worst one of the worst Power Four teams out there. So, uh, any takers on Ole Miss to uh, win the SEC? I don't have conviction on the game enough to do it, but I think if you do like Ole Miss, you know, maybe you put 90% of your bet on Ole Miss and you take, you know, you save a sliver of that, you save 10% and you, you do throw it on, what is it, 25 to 1 to win the SEC? Or maybe if you want to go national champion and, you know, shoot for the stars, figure, hey, if they win this game, they got a good shot to get in the playoff. Uh, I, I, I don't mind that. I just, I don't have enough conviction on the game to actually pull the trigger on it. I don't know about SEC. I'm looking at Ole Miss and Bama to win the national championship. Not saying that I love them as like my favorite team, but price, mm -hmm. price, price, price. Old Miss is 35 to one to win the national championship. They win this game. They're in probably, they probably win out. And then 35 to one becomes 18 to one. You probably half it. And then if Bama can beat LSU, which I think they should given LSU's defensive issues with injuries, Bama goes from 18 to one to 12 to one. The problem is though, if Bama and Ole Miss both lose, they're out. So this is, you're, you're trying to figure out if you can get to two teams with two losses, they can't afford one more loss guys. But 
if Bama wins and Ole Miss wins, they they could both get in. So I'm super torn on this uh, on this whole situation, if you could tell. Yeah, it, it's really interesting because Alabama, if they were to lose this week in Baton Rouge, potentially will wind up nine and three. And who knows what's going to happen if Oregon plays whomever in the in the Big Ten championship game and, and they lose. And if Georgia were to win this week and, and went out and win the SEC, you could have Alabama nine and three win over the number one ranked team in the country. Like that, that is kind of like the uh, the litmus test for college football playoff ridiculousness in the year one year one of the 12 team playoff. But a really, really interesting game this week, uh, Jeff Down. Uh, in Baton Rouge, first time since 99 that you've had an LSU-Alabama game without either Nick Saban or Les Miles on the sideline. First time since 2006, neither Alabama nor LSU have been ranked in the top 10 at game time uh, in the AP poll. And then if you look at LSU loving this home underdog role, last 10 games is a home dog of less than two touchdowns. Tigers have won eight of them outright. Uh, Sammy alluded to the injuries on defense. We, we've seen Alabama uh, prior to the bye. It looked like they needed a bye in the worst possible way. They got it. Uh, do you think Milrow and that offense now can kind of heal up, lick their wounds, and, and head to what's going to be a an unbelievably hostile atmosphere in Baton Rouge on Saturday night? Look, off a of bye, you would hope that, you know, we get a clear picture of what this offense can be. Now they've had multiple weeks to figure it out and and whatnot, and they need some improvement, right? Bear, they're not good in sort of third and medium and long, which is a reflection, in my opinion, of the quarterback, right? The quarterback is just not a very accurate passer at times, especially in, their, in the kind of intermediate area. It's great throwing deep. Same thing we saw last year, right? Great the line of scrimmage, great throwing deep. Not great intermediately. The offensive line has kind of been hit or miss. And their 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 penalties right now, I think they're the hundred and twenty-eighth in in the country in penalties per game. So an undisciplined team on top of Amazing. the other issues they have uh, on defense as well. But LSU is a flawed team, also, right? Um defensively, they've gotten better throughout the season, but still allow too many explosive plays. And it's so funny, guys, it, when you're watching that AM LSU game the first half, I saw tweets like Nussmeyer quarterback one. He, he's, the, he's the best yeah. quarterback in this draft. And by the end of the game, it was like, well, I don't know, maybe QB4 will. So, like, you know, he, <laughs> Nussmeyer is still sort of, I think, you know, kind of not all put together. So, I, I have nothing on this game. I think it's going to be one of those wildly entertaining games with two teams that are pretty even, but still sort of have enough flaws where it goes back and forth. Whoopsie. So, uh, I, I got nothing on this one. Should be a fun game, uh, obviously, and I just I have a hard time going against DeBoer here. I just think uh, there's enough flaws with LSU defensively. Uh, Milro, look, he he does struggle down to down, but he does, man. He he hunts those big, you know, those big time throws, those home run balls, and I think LSU will give up enough of them. And Nussmeyer, like to your point, uh, the, the inconsistency, but he does not have a running game to lead on. So to me, that's that's like the tiebreaker here. I know you got to lay points on the road. I, I haven't done it yet. I'd probably, if I was going to bet Bama, I would just look for a cheap money line. But I I just don't think you can be one dimensional and beat Bama, beat DeBoer. Uh, I I do think Bama finds a way to win this game and. Uh, Barry, you you hinted at it. We talked about the other day. Like, if Bama loses and they're ten and three, some of these as we come down the stretch here, these interesting scenarios of like, all right, like if Bama's ten and three, would they have a chance? If SMU lost an ACC title game and their only two losses were like a close loss to Miami and uh, and BYU, would they have a chance? Uh, boy, it's it's going to be hard because we've never had a twelve team playoff before, and with the playoff field tripling in size, uh, a, a lot of firsts for all this stuff. My gut. My gut says Bama. My head says over. That's where I'm at, Bear, on Wednesday. We'll see what happens by Saturday. Yeah, I, I could probably get behind an overplay as well, certainly th- seeing what uh, Marcel Reed did to that LSU defense in the second half of College Station a couple of weeks back and knowing what Jalen was seeing, what Jalen Miller, M- Miller, Milrow can clearly do, um, being what he did to George early in the year. So, yeah, I, I think of everything involved in this game, I, I think over probably – would be the way I would look at this game as well. Uh, Another game in the SEC, we saw Florida play about as tough and close and good of a game as they potentially could have played last week in the cocktail party. Uh, Somehow that game was tied late despite all of the injuries that they had. Now they've got Texas sitting there off of an idle week. Uh, 
knowing what they have to do in order to maintain uh, their position in the college football playoff race. Maybe they're in the running for that like elusive or actually elusive, but like coveted uh, number five spot in the, in the college football playoffs. It, this is, I think, a Texas team no worse uh, than than ten and two, probably maybe eleven and one, depending on what happens uh, in the uh, game at, at A and M at the end of the year. I like Texas in this game. I, I think Florida is in a terrible situation. A physical game against Texas against uh, Georgia last week. Lost guys to injury. The quarterback position. Lagway's not playing. He just I, Napier is throwing that out there just to try and give some hope and maybe throw Georgia off the center. There's no way that he's going to be able to play it this week. I think this is a, a total, a total ass kicking. I would be looking at Texas lay the points. I would be looking at Florida team total under, I'd be looking at under in the game. Uh, I, I think this has something along the lines of 42 to seven written all over it. Okay. I'm glad you're very confident Lagway not going to play because I did write in my notes. I have nine quarterbacks that are important to me this Amazing. week that are all banged up. Longest list I've had all season. And Lagway's at the top. 125 Florida quarterback, DJ Lagway, parentheses, hamstring. I thought he blew the hamstring out. Oh, like, wow. I, I, I mean, and then you see Napier say, well, you know, it's not that bad. I'm like, okay. Billy Napier might be a liar. Got it. I mean, you just like <laughs> file that away and just keep that for a rainy day. From the, from the Kyle Shanahan school of lying. Yes, Christian, <laughs> we, we might be able to, we, yeah, I think he's going to be able to contribute Monday night. It's turned into may never play again. <laughs> I, I understand the appetite to bet Florida because everybody just watched Florida hang with Georgia and many people didn't think Florida would get off the bus. So you see a big number against a team that just fought. It makes sense. But that was the cocktail party. That was a rivalry game. It's Texas or pass for me. Um, but some big quarterbacks, guys, this week. Lagway, okay, you say doubtful. Let's call it doubtful. Yeah. Haynes King at Georgia Tech. It's a huge one for me against yeah. Miami. Uh, Brown at USF with the foot. I don't know if he's going to be able to go. And then this guy, Brady Cook at Mizzou, he left that game against Bama. He came in with an ankle injury and then left that game with a left hand injury. Drew Pine's been taking number one reps at Mizzou. Oof. Drew Pine <laughs> against Brent Venables. Mm, sort of an advantage, Oklahoma there. And then the other one, obviously, is Army quarterback Bryson Daly, who was ruled out at the very last minute last Saturday. Those are the oh, big ones man. for me. King, Cook, Daly, and then you say Lagway's out. If Lagway's out, they could get... <laughs> They could I, get I just, blown out, guys. I, I, what about Cam Rising? So. <laughs> <laughs> didn't didn't wasn't Brown a, a a game time decision tending towards playing a couple of weeks ago? Yeah, and he has a broken bone in his foot. <laughs> it's so funny. I uh, I just sent a note to another person uh, who dialed into SEC in in Florida, and I said the text was literally no chance Lagway plays this week, right? immediate response hell no with like a million exclamation points so take it for what it's worth we'll see i'm surprised urban meyer was that outspoken about it and not <laughs> gave you that response. <laughs> uh, guys th can we have a can, can uh, we, you, don't you put my cover there will they might have they were gonna win i man i, I got georgia futures florida might have beaten them last week if that kid didn't get hurt how many votes do you think we'd win in the state of nevada if we ran a platform of having uniform college football injury reports yeah do, do you think people will vote for us? Because like they, the army thing pisses me off a lot. I, of course I had army team total over last week and the quarterback finished the last game. He had six touchdowns against ECU goes to buy. And then bear text us what bear like nine 45 AM on Saturday morning. And was like, Hey, uh, army quarterback, not going to play. And then seven minutes later it was announced. And we don't know why I feel like I was a little misled. I mean, look, I, you, you win and lose wagers, different reasons every time. It's not the end of the world, but it does feel like we need a uniform football injury report like the NFL has, like the NBA has. Just something. I mean, you don't have to say what the injury is. No one says, but put down like, hey, quarterback didn't practice today. So we sort of have an idea of, of whether or not he's going to play. That kind of changes whether or not you wager on the game. We can ask for a refund. Portnoy wasn't happy either. I think he had Army as the final leg of a eight legger, and <laughs> he needed to lay twenty one, and they won twenty to three. We were though Bear sent the text, and we were just getting down under. It was forty two and a half, 
it got down to 38 and then you're telling yourself because you know better you're like oh i can't go under 38 the hell you can't will it's 20 to 3 the final and, it was, and that was a late <laughs> touchdown to get it to 20 by the way it was pretty much yeah. you know 13 3 most of the second half i know because i had air force i think plus 21 and a half and boy, he threw the was it a pick six to make it seventeen, and then he's out there throwing the ball again. And man, that that Air Force quarterback is uh is not exactly you know Josh Allen or Patrick Mahomes. I was worried he was going to throw another one, but uh, Jeff, I think you should just go on Twitter and uh, ask for a refund. That's uh that's the culture of sports betting. Just <laughs> hey, avoid my bet. Ask for a refund. I, I was misled. Except when I win a wager because someone gets hurt, unfortunately for an under, I never ask for the money back though. So I kind of have to you know go both ways there. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just looking. That's an interesting number this week in that in that Army, uh, North Texas game. It's six uh, against the North Texas team that defensively is atrocious, but they can score points. I mean, you get you give up 52 to to, Mem- to Memphis, uh, backdoor backdoor push a couple of weeks back against Tulane, allowed 45 to the Green Wave, about 37 to FAU who can't score, but. Like we we saw that army offense last week with, with, without Daly, and it's clearly a uh, a different team. I, I don't know if I'd want to lay six on the road against an offense that can score if uh, we if we find out that Daly indeed uh, cannot play. Oh, I can tell you right now, if he's in, you'll see a move to Army. It probably goes through seven. If he's out, kiss the 64, 63 and a half goodbye. It's coming down. So Daly in. Goes the Army, daily out, run to the under, for sure. Another game in the SEC that I, uh, I'm a little, I don't want to say concerned, but curious about it is, is uh, Mississippi State going on the road. Uh, Tennessee, the Vols have a, the big one with Georgia. We've seen a couple times this year with, with Mississippi State, they've been that kind of sandwich game team uh, for a and the week before the Aggies had a big game, uh, for Georgia the week before the Bulldogs, uh, I think it was one of playing in Texas. Both those teams that won didn't even come close to cover them. The difference here, though, and which is why I can't fully get behind Mississippi State, um, is because the game is in Knoxville. So uh, you, you're, you're talking about teams traveling to, to Starkville in kind of a sleepy atmosphere with how bad uh, Mississippi State is. And here you have uh, Tennessee with a really good defense. Granted, though, with an offense that's struggling, any interest in uh, either under 61 here, which seems like a pretty high number, or uh, Mississippi State plus the 24? Can't lay it with this offense with Tennessee. It's just to me, they've been one of the more disappointing uh, units in the country. I thought they were going to be really good, you know, both sides of the ball. And if they got what we expected on offense, this is a legitimate national title contender. Just with their, you know, with their defense, if you got something similar from their offense, they'd be, you know, one of the elite teams. It's just man, this offense. It's hard to lay a big number, and they were laying a big number last week with uh, against Kentucky. It's just it's pulling teeth trying to get these them to cover big numbers. I liked them uh, a few weeks ago against Florida. That was life and death. So uh, it, it'd be dog or pass. I don't know that I can get there with the 24 but it would be mississippi state or nothing for me Ooh, see i i get what you're saying with the offense because it's been a little streaky for tennessee and then you pull up jeff you pull up the mississippi state schedule they gave up 41 to toledo yeah 45 to florida 35 to texas 41 to georgia 34 to a&m 58 to arkansas and you go Okay, maybe this is just what Tennessee needs. I'm 47-17 in the game. So I think my my numbers have Tennessee. Yeah, Tennessee's 23 and a half, 24. Yep, I understand it will 100%. But Mississippi State again, 41 to Toledo, 58 to Arkansas. Guys, those are not elite offenses. Maybe just play like Tennessee team total over, like a first half number where they just come out early and sort of smoke Mississippi State and then lay off in the second half as they prepare for next week. That feels like maybe a, a way to play this game. Just like a Tennessee to score early and often, and the second half of this game just sort of run, run, run the clock out, don't get injured, get ready to play Georgia. Vandy fans, show your gold. You bet the Commodores is an underdog this year, by the way. You got a lot of, oh, yeah. a lot of gold, a lot of loot to show for it. What, what, what is it now? Uh, with, with Vanderbilt six times this year, an underdog, four outright wins, uh, have an opportunity for a fifth win uh, as an underdog this this week, a slight home dog to South Carolina, who pulled the upset last week over AM, which lost Le'Veon Moss during that game. It feels like, uh, like Vandy might be that little underdog with fleas this week. Well, I, I think I think South Carolina's defense is really, really good, but 
I don't know if I want to bet. This is going to be a total stay away for me. Yeah, I, I don't want to bet against uh, Pavia as a, and Vandy as a dog man. They played so well. And, and, it, and at the same time, I don't know if I'd want to bet South Carolina uh, just because Vandy, maybe the dog with fleas, or I don't want to bet against South Carolina just because they might be a little bit of love. The defense is still really good. It is. Uh, I get behind Vandy here, though. I mean, Vandy's just good as a dog. Like you said, they're a good under team because they just, man, they muck the game up. They they run that play clock. And uh, you know, maybe I do like the under more than I like the side here with Vandy because I, I was surprised how many points were scored last week, South Carolina a and But, man, South Carolina has some absolute monsters defensively. That's still an offense, especially now that you put them on the road, sort of a sleepy spot against Vandy. Are they going to really light up the scoreboard? So, to me, uh, I could see a lower scoring he- game here, Sammy. I don't want to take your thunder here, Jeff, because you sent us the tweet from your guy, Barton Simmons. How yes. great was that on yeah. Saturday, yep. huh? Yeah. With the four check marks. Do you know him? No, but he used to work, he used to work at a recruiting service. Like I think it was like twenty four seven or on three one of those. And then so I used to just like follow him, and then he started working for Vandy. So I just kept. I I don't think I've seen a tweet from him in a while. That tweet just, just popped up. It was it was incredible. It was fantastic. I followed him right away. So Barry, what he did was he took the four games that they were dogs that they won outright, mm-hmm. and he tweeted plus thirteen and a half green check, plus twenty two and a half green check, plus twelve and a half green check. Mm-hmm. Plus seven and a half green check. I love that. I loved it. And I instantly followed him. That's that's a great way. That's just a great way to troll though, right? Like you you get your point. There's not a lot to it. And everyone, and everyone just sort of laughs at, at the success you've had, which is great. Speaking of success, Indiana nine and oh, Kurt Zignetti nine and oh this year, 10 and oh last year, uh, the, the Hoosiers, may continue to be undervalued or underappreciated just because of their lack of wins. And even though Michigan is not the team that they've been the last couple of years, they still do carry the name Michigan. It probably still is the best defensive front that the Hoosiers uh, will have seen this year. I I, I don't think Will Johnson, obviously, uh, being there is, is, is going to be it's going to be a problem for the, the Michigan secondary against Rourke and some of the IU receivers. But are we to a point now to do we want to lay 14 with Indiana now with kind of everybody noticing? And I, I always hate being, I don't want to say I'm late to the the, the party because I, I had an Indiana win total over, but I, I did have Michigan State last week. 10 nothing. Oh, I feel good. See, told you, told you this was an ugly sandwich game. What would what, they rip off 50 straight points after that? So that was a hell of a win last week for Indiana, even if Michigan State is not a a super team and unlike Miami and unlike Penn state and some other teams like Indiana may not have, it may not have, it may not have beaten a, a decent team, but they're blitzing people. And I think that needs to be recognized and appreciated. And sure. The end of the year, we might be looking back and saying, Hey, yeah, they were 11 and one and they lost to Ohio state and they didn't beat a team uh, that wound up getting a vote in the AP poll. And they too could be an interesting uh, college football playoff type team here but 14 here uh, against Michigan at home anyone anyone want to lay that I think uh, Signetti's boys lay another uh, big number I don't want to take it and, and how about this from the summer line a 28 point a four touchdown uh, adjustment from where we were in the summer just insanity we've got a couple of games those uh, like that this way in Utah BYU is a similar yeah. one uh, where like you know three four touchdown uh, adjustment yeah, it's just crazy. Um, look, Michigan's a disaster. This is the biggest game in Indiana football history. If they win, look at the rest of the schedule. They have a bye. They have Ohio State, and they have uh, our, our boys from Purdue who they're going to bury. If they win, if they win this game, they're looking at a one loss season, and they're going to be in. And you know, now you get a shot at Ohio State, and who knows, maybe you go can can go to a Big Ten title game. I wouldn't put it past them. Uh, I want no part of, of Michigan here. I like every week. Oh, this is the this is the week where Indiana you know has a look ahead. This is the week where they trip up. They have no look aheads. They're just man. They're so buttoned up. They're so good. They're explosive. They stopped. Them. I mean, they're just, they're a really good team. I know you're probably paying a tax here for the Indiana, you know, story, but, but I, I don't know how you feel, Jeff. I, I would lay it before I took it for sure. So two things here, uh, Bear mentioned it. Um, you know, they might not have the best wins, but they're blowing everyone out. Like, would you rather back a team that sort of had a softer schedule, but one games by three and by seven and by one or 47, 10, 56, seven, 41 24. Like they're blowing everyone out. They were down 10 nothing in this game. We talked about it. They scored 47 straight points. 
47 straight points in college football, in any, in any form of football, really hard to do. And here's the thing about Michigan I, that I'm kind of concerned about. What are they going to be after losing to Oregon? Um, you know, h- how many guys that are sort of around from last season look around and say, well, this isn't what we had last season. Um, I don't know. I, I, I'm not accusing anyone of of not playing hard this week against Indiana, but it does feel, it sounded like to me. Sammy, it's, it's, it sounded very like much that. like this could be a sort of a dead Michigan squad uh, playing, you know, the biggest game in Indiana school history. I would, I would lay with Indiana before I took it with Michigan. It sounded like spoken from experience there, Jeff. You kind of sure. never had that problem. We were always still good at Oregon. Didn't have to worry about that. Indiana is the best cover team in the country, eight and one ATS. So they're no longer undervalued. They could still technically be underrated, but not undervalued. You are paying a tax on Indiana yep. like you're paying on the Detroit Lions in the NFL. You're just never going to get relative value, but that doesn't mean that they can't cover. They are also, let's see, seven and two to the over. The only way, guys, Michigan can hang around is if they Michigan this game up. If they muck it up, if they get good defense, if they can play keep away. I bet against Indiana for the first time last week, first time all season. I said, it will never be me laying Indiana. <laughs> nerd. Nice call, nerd. I wouldn't lay 14 and a half, though. So it's it's an under or pass for me. This open 48 and a half, it's out to 50. If I could get a 51 bear, I'd go under 51 and just hope that that Michigan's defense can at least keep this outside of the end zone multiple times. And the one thing about Indiana. We talk a lot about Indiana's offense and their their quarterback and their running game. Their defense is very good. Very yeah. good. Yeah. So I'm I'm under 51 if I can get it for sure. Yeah, it's certainly an example of what a team can do in in the portal and NIL era. You, a coach coming from the school and bringing the majority of his players with him. We're familiar with him and uh, winning culture there at, at, at JMU. So uh, yeah, well, well, we, I'm curious to uh, to see IU this week against Michigan. Then a couple weeks. Uh, when Big Noon Kickoff is in Columbus. Uh, speaking of Big Noon Kickoff, we will be in Lubbock this week for um, the game between Colorado and Texas Tech. And that obviously brings us to the Super Six, sponsored by DraftKings. Uh, a column coming up later in the week. One of the questions, of course, is going to be, what will the result be of the Colorado-Texas Tech game? Uh, the Buffalo is a three-and-a-half-point favorite on the road over the Red Raiders, who. Uh, unbelievable comeback win, late drive in Ames last week to upset uh, the Iowa State Cyclones and knock them from the ranks of un- the undefeated. Not only for – is Colorado worth a bet to win the Big 12? I mean, in order to get to the Big 12 title game, they have to win out. So uh, if you think Colorado is going to win – uh, maybe you just, again, is it one of those things you put maybe your half a unit on Colorado, either minus a three and a half or a uh, money line, short money line here. You put maybe half of it on there. Their price to win the big 12 is certainly as has dropped down. They, they don't need much help. They basically need Iowa state to pick up a second loss or basically not, not finish tied head to head with Kansas state because of the, the tiebreaker scenario. BYU obviously has a couple of games still remaining on their schedule. It, it's so funny how we've almost done a complete 180 with Colorado this year, like last year, everyone, I think just kind of like rolling their eyes, uh, kind of were nauseated. I don't mean that nauseated. That's a, that's a negative sounding word, but kind of like Colorado got so much talk and so much publicity for really not doing anything on the field. It was just like Deion Sanders is there to overhaul the roster. His son is the quarterback and it was like, I gave up 90 today and lost again, but this year they're actually good. And, and I remember before the year started, a buddy of mine said that, according to his numbers and everything, they had the best talent starting twenty two in the big in the Big Twelve. And I don't know if it's certainly playing out that way, but he certainly exonerated himself <laughs> uh, pretty well here. And I know he was the one that tied me on, onto some Travis Hunter Heisman futures, some Colorado uh, to win the Big Twelve futures before the year. Uh, and here they are. I'm going to lay it with Colorado here. I, I think Texas Tech, if you look at how poorly uh, they defend the pass, if they can't if they can't get pressure, if they can't defend those Colorado receivers and, and they give Shadur time to just stand back there and pick his open target, 
it's going to be a long day in Lubbock for the uh, for the Red Raiders. So uh, give me Colorado minus a three and a half, and uh, I'm going to add a little uh, CU uh, to win the Big Twelve as well. Uh, Will. Yeah, I mean, you asked, is it is it time to bet Colorado plus three fifty to win Big Twelve? No, it was time to bet them a month ago. We were talking about them at like nine to one or eleven to one. Look, Sammy and I have always been Dion believers, so speak for yourself in terms of uh, the skepticism. <laughs> no, I mean, look, they they've improved the team. They're better in the trenches. I think they got uh, you know decent upgrades from the coordinators. The Big Twelve is a mess. Living since been great. Yeah, it's it's hard to think now that you know one of these teams is going to get a buy in the playoff. Uh, why not them? I and are we sure? Like, and I, man, we were talking about this. I got to really familiarize myself. Not that you read these and it's any clearer, but these tiebreakers are so complicated because it used to be pretty straightforward. Hey, this team played head to head and who won gets the tiebreaker. These teams don't play each other anymore. So I don't know if they all have one loss or if Colorado has one loss and Ohio state or Iowa state has one loss. Uh, are we sure Iowa state gets in because I know it's like a strength of victory, strength of schedule. It is complicated, but to your point, how does Texas Tech get stops? At first glance, hey, this is a tricky game for Colorado. Uh, you know, Texas Tech coming in off the high of last week, but you look at some of the point totals. You know, they gave it 49 to Baylor. They gave it 51 to Abilene Christian, 37 to Wazoo. Man, maybe maybe you just go Colorado team total over here, Jeff. Oh, a preview for maybe my fate of the week a little bit later there at the Colorado team total. You got to stay tuned and listen to this. Um, look, the point about Colorado is pretty simple, right? They've had the same formula all season. If you cannot hit the passer, and you can't have anyone to slow down the wide receivers, they're going to score a lot of points. And that was the formula last year for a decent part. The difference is this season, they can actually play defense. Last year, they couldn't. And the defense is better. So now instead of you know barely winning a game or losing a game 38-34, they're winning 34-21. Like, and I think that's the the thing about Colorado this year. And um, to everyone's point, like, yeah, can, can Tech win this game? Yes, but to me, it's a very narrow path. It's winning 42-38, 45-42. That's a very difficult thing to do, Bear, to have one path to win to win a game. So, uh, yeah, Colorado plus the points, I think, is the only way. And, and we talked about this I think, last week, and we'll mention the number. I think, Will, when we first started talking about Colorado win the Big 12, it was, or maybe it was make the playoffs, it was like 1,300. So it was 13-1 to 1, uh, we started talking about this. They're not going to lose again. Their schedule doesn't dictate that. They got two home games against a Utah team that has no offense, Oklahoma State. They're at Kansas. The week. They're at they're you know they're at Kansas. Um and uh and and they play tech, like they're not going to lose. They're going to be ten and two. And so then we have to figure out tiebreakers. Ooh, you're saying no way they lose Saturday, huh? No way. No, I don't, I don't think it's no way. I would bet on Colorado. I don't see them losing. Do you see them losing? I got Colorado like five points better on a neutral. So I'm I'm not at three and a half. But I I also like I don't love tech. So. It's a pass. I, I think we're all rooting for Travis Hunter to catch yes. two touchdowns and pick off a pass. That would be awesome. Um, and I'm, I'm just happy for you, Bear, that you go back where you belong, to a Colorado game on Big Noon kickoff. I, I heard rumors of you and Bruce laying down a blanket and having brisket and burn ends with Travis Hunter during a segment. This is right where you want to be. Fi- I'm fine with that. Hey, I'm, I'm all for my guy, Travis Hunter. Let's sit, let, let my Miami friends aren't going to enjoy me saying that. But, yeah, that – Give give Travis the Heisman. Yeah, what are the uh, what are the chances he wins the Bolitnikoff, the Thorpe, and the Heisman? Somehow we, I, I was shocked to see that he was actually the favorite uh, in the Bolitnikoff. Like I know Trey Harris has been hurt. I mean Jeremiah Smith has been great. Like I was a little surprised to see Hunter favored to win the Bolitnikoff. I haven't checked those numbers. I have Harris at twenty to one before the season. That's tough. What what uh? Do you know the numbers top of your head? When I che- obviously I can't check it now, and being that I'm going to a bad state. On uh, tomorrow night in, in Texas, by bad state, any any state that I don't have access to, like these markets and DraftKings and and, and other mm-hmm. sports books, those are bad states. Look, look at yeah, bear nothing, getting political. Just because yeah, well, I don't want exactly. Political. I don't want I don't want anybody to interpret this as political. Of course, that, 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 what, what day of the week we are and what how it happened Tuesday night, whether whether it's uh, California, Texas, Wisconsin, mm-hmm. any any of those bad states that don't allow me to hop on my DraftKings app. Uh, I get mad, but I think Hunter was like plus three fifty to win the Bolitnikoff the, the last time I was able to look. I think we, I was in Indiana for that when uh, yeah. I was able to do that, and, and Smith might have been plus five hundred, and I, I think Trey Harris was, was right around there as well. So uh, maybe they'll have them posted for my layover in uh, in Detroit uh, tomorrow, and I will uh, I will let you know. You got to go to Detroit to go to Texas. Well, you know, here, here's what I'm doing. I'm a Delta, I, I am a Delta whore. 
I, I have summer vacations that I need to pay for and, and use miles to book flights. So I need as many Delta miles as I can get. So I am literally, <laughs> Delta doesn't fly to Lubbock. So I am flying, but by the time we finish recording the pod on Thursday morning, um, and I, I can get to the airport, the, all the nonstops to Dallas have exhausted for the day and I'm not gonna able to take one. So I got to go LaGuardia, Detroit, Detroit, Dallas on Delta. And then I'm changing airlines uh, and taking the short little 45 minute, 50, fl- 50 minute flight from Dallas to Lubbock on American because American services Lubbock. So yeah, that, that's, that's how much of a, uh, how loyal I am to, to Delta airlines. I don't, I don't yeah. Say you're crazy one. bear. I, I just, this, I just, it's just insane. You can fly direct to Dallas. It's a, that's an insane, it's an insane no. travel schedule. No, not no, on Delta. I, I, there's no, there's no other airline, five different airline bear. That's no. crazy to me. I need, I need, I need my miles. What I, what I need to fit, try and remember, and I'm sure there's no way I'll be able to do it, being that it was, what, 16 years ago now. I remember when game day was there for the the Crabtree game. Crabtree, yeah. I mean, if you want to have some fun this week, search the YouTube uh, of that game and the highlights. You'll see me on the sideline in that end zone next to Fowler, and we're both there. And Fowler has that the jaw dropping wide open, and I have like have one eye kind of looking at the Crabtree catch, and and one eye like looking up at the clock to see like how much time is left. Like, is Texas going to get a chance to to get the ball back and potentially uh, win this thing? So, yeah, have fun with that. But what I was going to say is, the night before the game on Friday night, we went out and had an unbelievable dinner at a. a a mom and pop Mexican restaurant in, in Lubbock. And it was awesome. And Bob Knight took us there and I, I, there's no chance I'm going to remember the name of the place, but uh, it was fantastic. I'm, I am looking forward to getting some good, uh, some good Tex-Mex Mexican food on, uh, on Friday night, the night, the night before. You guys hear that name drop? Bear. What a name drop that. Well, Bob Knight took what, us there. No big deal. What, One thirty-two PM tomorrow, American direct to Dallas. So you're, you're being, you're not happy. You're, that's it's, you're insane. Well, 12, 59 to Detroit and then <laughs> to connect in Detroit. To, just be, uh, just be honest. You're going to Detroit. So you can wager before you get to Texas. Let's no, 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 no. I'm, I'm going through Detroit so I can fly my preferred airline. You Holy might just want. To, you might just want to see Detroit. You might want to just you know check. Yeah, in because on. because I haven't seen Detroit's airport enough this year. I know what you're going to do. You're going to Detroit. You're going to go across the border. Game. You're going to play some five card draw in Windsor, <laughs> and you're you're going to come back to Detroit. You know, you just want to hit all the spots. Plenty of time. Plenty, 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 plenty of time to do that. Upset alert this week, BYU, and people have been doubting them. We talked about Indiana. People doubting them all year long, but now we got the Holy War on the road. Short favorite. Jeff, have you ever been in a situation, whether at college or pro, probably more college than pro, but, and I know you talked about how great Oregon was all the time, so you were never in this situation before, but like a chance to kind of like spoil your rival season, like Utah offensively since, since our guy Camerizing has officially been out, worst offense in the country, or certainly the power five, like how can they possibly yeah. score points this week? But like, is there some type of, motivational boost when you see your biggest rival undefeated in the top 10 college football yeah. playoff talk. Now they're favored on your home field. Like, like th- does that do anything for a player? Or is that just all bullshit that we kind of throw around? Yeah. I don't know that feeling. Cause we beat Washington all four years. I was at Oregon. Um, <laughs> and, and the, how, how much and, of the setup was that? And the is next year, just like, I mean, in 2008, they went 0 and 12. So that's how good they were. Uh, how'd you do, Oregon? How'd you do against Oregon was, State your four years? Uh, we were one and three. So not, not, not ideal. <laughs> To be Funny fair, to, that one up, to be fair, we did have a fifth string quarterback start one of those games, so that is it's a fairness. Uh, I'm, I'm not over that one yet. I remember that 2007. Um, and then, yeah, and you then the next game I unloaded on you guys in the bowl game. Yeah, and you, oh, you did. Oh, so you made some money. Yes. Good for you. Sun um, Bowl. Uh, Sun Bowl. I remember South yes, Florida. Right? Uh, South, South Florida. Florida. Yes. Um, all right, back to the actual conversation. Um, both teams off a of bye. I just don't trust Utah's offense. It's that simple. Um, Wilson may play. The quarterback Rose may play. Ludwig's not there. Uh, the new Cam OC Rising is questionable. He, he is questionable, actually. Yeah, <laughs> you, you forgot about that one. Uh, it'll be game time decision on Saturday. Uh, <laughs> we'll get the tweet or early AM. Um, I I just don't trust Utah's offense, guys. Um, yeah, in theory, 
you're off a bye. You, you should be able to work on some things. But what happens in the middle of second quarter when the opening script is over uh, or the middle of the third quarter or the fourth quarter? Now you have to rely on your offense to make plays. They haven't done it all season. They haven't been able to do this all season. Um, for whatever flaws BYU has, they still are a good football team. Uh, yeah, it's a holy war. It's, it's going to be a night game at Rice Eccles, which nobody goes in and wins night games at Rice Eccles um, for the most part. But, Sammy, I, I, I can't bet on Utah on this one. I won't bet on BYU, but I don't think Utah can cover this game. I have this bell on the morning show. Whenever one of us, me and Joe, say we can't do something, I just ring the bell. Yeah, okay, that's what you That's what you probably bell. should do it. If you can't do it, you probably should do it. I just think we get, look, we're going to get some big upset this week. That's not a bell. That's ice rattling around in a uh, in a getty. <laughs> but it was the closest yeah. thing I had to a bell handy. It's not going to be my team, Purdue, beating Ohio State. Miami's going to roll Georgia Tech, especially if Haynes King is out. I don't think Indiana is going to lose, but we could see Iowa State lose. We could see Army lose. Colorado could Georgia lose. Lee? Notre Dame, eh, Notre Dame's not going to lose. Missouri could lose. Could Penn State lose to Washington? Probably not. not. No. But this is, I will find myself, this will be the story of my season. I will take another dead-ass freaking underdog at home getting four and a half, and they will lose by two touchdowns. I will I will be on Utah, unfortunately. And I, to be honest with you, Jeff, I don't love it, but... <laughs> it it's, it's like it's like one of those Scott uh, Scott Van Pell like the the GPG the general principle game uh, to take and take. I agree. Home I agree with what Sammy said. Like this is a general principle. A, a, a team off a of bye, which I like at home, playing for their season, playing a rival. I just don't trust Utah. That's the hey, same anyone anyone if Jeff if you want to hop on that flight to Dallas and then join me in Lubbock uh, afterwards. You just want to hop in the car, take that little the two hundred and fifty mile drive to the southwest, and we can take uh, and take in a little one and seven Kennesaw State at one and eight UTEP <laughs> uh, first meeting of one and seven team versus the one eight team since uh, twenty twenty one. So uh, could could make it a, a really full complete weekend of games. Unfortunately, uh, or fortunately, depending on how you you view this, I have to be. Uh, at the Wake Cal game on Friday night at Wake Forest. So, um, unfortunately, I cannot travel out to Lubbock with you to watch that game. I need to find something to wager on this game. I'm going to find something to sit there in the crowd so I don't have to just be bored. Uh, Wake Cal. Yeah, I'm going to that game Friday night. Uh, I'll find something to wager on. I don't know yet. We'll figure it out. Tough spot for Cal. It's a lot of travel. It's a lot of points. Wake, Wake's wake been decent here recently. I, I like Wake. I think that's another uh, you know Friday night underdog that, that could be barking here. Friday, Friday, Friday night dog. Well, UCLA, Iowa, I think is a fr- another Friday night yeah, game. I like Iowa though. Th- this with this week as well. So we'll we'll uh, we'll see what happens if that underdog uh, run on Friday nights continues, guys. Uh, what, what do you got, wait Sammy? A minute. Wait oh, a minute. Oh, 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 no, 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 no. No, we don't have FCS. We don't. Okay. The guy, the guy is he's on tilt right now. He's lost two in a row, and the people are tweeting at me. So he's he's a little on tilt right now. He's six and four this season, and Twitter has gotten him. <laughs> Off the uh, what has he done for me? Lately? No, I wanted to give. I mean, we we won an entire show without talking about Will's SMU bet. Um, Ding dong, baby. Louisville's dead or uh, Clemson's dead. Dead. A uh, long way to go. What do you guys think about this? Because I have them 16 to 1 to win the ACC. I I laid no playoffs minus 130. Is there any chance I will get middled here and they go 11 and 2 and they still get in? No, no. No, you're more confident than I am. I tend to agree with you. I don't think they'll get the benefit of the doubt because they're not like a brand name, but I don't know. We got it. We got to get to 12 somehow. I, you, you got used. You, you're seem pretty sure about that. Yeah. They're not, they're not okay. the law lost to Miami. Assuming it's Miami in the East. People going overtime. They're still, Hey, they're only not, two close losses to no, BYU I, Miami. Okay. I can't, I, I, I'd be shocked. I'd be shocked. The market thinks there's a chance, though, because they're like plus 260 to win the ACC, and they're even money to get in the playoffs, which is interesting. It, it is, and it, it, I maybe I am just re- thinking back to how the playoff committee like ranks these teams and having gone right. through that exercise with, with schedule and quality wins. I, I think there will be discussions in the room about like how you compare a 9-3 and three SEC team potentially against a sure uh, eleven and so we, we'll see. Hey, I'm rooting for you. I, I don't. I don't want you to get a to get reverse middle there and, and 
come out on the losing side, but you made a great bet. You're alive. Uh, we've got some other futures here that, that are alive. Uh, I bet Tulane minus 110 to win the AAC, by the way, this week as well. I think they're in the game. So uh, we, we've rambled on enough here. Travel, food, uh, uh, everything else. Jeff's uh, Oregon team who always beat everybody and we're never in any bad situations. Uh, mm. More of that and coming up next week. Sammy, well, appreciate you guys. All right, Bear, I'm a little bit sad. No, no FCS play. I couldn't write down on my notebook, but we'll uh, hopefully Sammy tweets it out <laughs> a little bit later. Um, I'm going to go to my fade of the week. Uh, we talked about this game a little bit earlier. I'm fading Texas Tech's defense against Colorado this week. And Colorado off a bye at Texas Tech. I'm taking Colorado over 33 and a half points. I, I made this switch a couple times so far in this podcast. It's, it's played well for me. Texas Tech's defense, guys, 107th points per drive, 127th in pressure rate, 150th in havoc rate. They don't hit the quarterback bear. They don't have tackle for losses. And they don't play any pass defense. Colorado so far in the year has put up really the last three, you know, three of the last four games, 48 points, 34, 34, to 40 points per drive. They're, they're healthy. They're off a bye bear. I mean, I know you're at this game. I can't see Colorado being held under 35 points in this matchup. They have had a propensity to get out to sort of big leads early in some of these games and shut it down offensively, which seems to be a routine thing in college football. But I think Tech could kind of keep keep pace, score a little bit, which makes Colorado be more kind of forceful in offense. So Colorado over 33 and a half points is my fate of the week. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm with you there in terms of the Colorado offense. What, what, what a crazy league uh, the Big 12 has been. And, and we talked about that before the year, how like people were just assuming that either Oklahoma State or Utah were going to win this league. Like you look at uh, the top five in the in the preseason media poll for the Big 12, Utah, Kansas, Arizona, and Oklahoma State all were projected to be in the top five. Those four teams were combined three and 19 in Big 12 play and 12 and 22 at all. You got Arizona State, who was picked dead last. They're six and two. We don't know if Scadaboo is going to play this week or not, so that obviously will affect that game. BYU wasn't picked very highly at all. They're eight and one in first place uh, right now in the top 10 in the country. So uh, the, the Big 12 is not disappointed. In, in terms of uh, up and down, crazy, um, upside down, inside out, whatever else you want to say, football. So uh, looking forward to uh, watching the Colorado offense uh, in action on Saturday afternoon. Uh, time now for our best bets presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. And I am going to stick in the Big 12. And, and this is always something that I hate doing. I hate Benny against Iowa State because I, I'm an adopted son of, of Ames. I've had a great relationship with the Iowa State fans and, and, and the people there, but I worry about them now. I know the game is not in Lawrence. It's at Arrowhead, so the Cyclone Nation is going to travel down there, and then and there'll be a ton of Iowa State fans at Arrowhead. Is there a two-and-a-half-point favorite over Kansas? But a lot of times you'll notice in college football, like any time a team loses that first game, and it's been a surprising type season. You get punched and you kind of suffer that loss. A little bit of doubt sometimes sets in like, uh, we really are, maybe we really aren't that good. We got fortunate. It takes a little while maybe to bounce back from a loss. And, and that's a dangerous thing here, I think, for Iowa State this week against the Kansas team who, look, they, they have clearly been disappointed, disappointing this year. But you look at Jalen Daniel the last few weeks, he's actually playing a heck of a lot better. And outside of the the double digit loss to TCU like like which really was a ridiculous game all their losses have been one score game lost at Illinois by six lost at UNLV late field goal lost by four at West Virginia lost by four at Arizona State lost by two late to K State I mean they, they're still playing hard they're still battling they're the team to watch in the big 12 title race because next three weeks they got Iowa State and they go to BYU and then they have Colorado coming up as well. So uh, they are the team that is going to go a long way in determining who ultimately will get to the Big 12 championship game. I think KU has a big chance this weekend to uh, to upset Iowa State and uh, do some favors to uh, to BYU and Colorado. Colorado is going to win again, Bear, without playing. Uh, they, 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 they did that <laughs> last week, right? I mean, they might have been the, the biggest yep. beneficiary of, of the Big 12 madness. It does look November too. Crazy things happen in November, Bear. It's this college football. Oh. A, a lot of teams, a lot of teams, you know, this is one thing we haven't really talked about too. Like with regards to Colorado, is one of them, like they've not been in this spot ever 
where oh. they've been, you know, having to win games in November, a, a lot of pressure, but they're not playing in crazy. Now, Lubbock is actually a hard place to play, but, you know, and not Kansas won't be in a couple of weeks. So, uh, worth talking about as we uh, as we proceed, Bear. All right, Bear, I'm going to buck a trend here in, in my wager for my best bet presented by DraftKings Sports. Yeah, buck we'll a trend? About, okay. Yeah, Friday Night Dogs. They've been covering a bunch. But I have Iowa minus six in the Rose Bowl. My mic keeps falling down today. Iowa minus six in the Rose Bowl on a short week here Friday night uh, for a couple reasons. Uh, one is that I like their coaching staff on a short week more than I like UCLA's coaching staff. UCLA's done a much better job lately. I I'm, might be in trouble with my under five and a half bear. I think I'll get home still, but they've been better uh, offensively lately. A uh, couple things here to note. Iowa's offense, kind of good this year. 45th in points, 28 in, in, in rushing efficiency, 31st bear on third down. And their defense is 10th in points per drive. So the defense is still good. The offense much better. UCLA getting better offensively, but haven't played a, an Iowa team, right? Haven't played this type of team. It, it was, it's, it's been Rutgers, Minnesota, Nebraska, and a couple other places I like Iowa in this game. UCLA 121st in penalties. Iowa's fourth. You know, so they're just like a better coach team right now. They made a quarterback change. They're going to go, they're going to run the football with Johnson. They're going to have Sullivan who can run the ball as well. Rose Bowls, there's no home field, there's no home field atmosphere in the Rose Bowl. I actually imagine that Iowa is more excited to play this game in the Rose Bowl than UCLA is on a Friday night. So I'll take Iowa minus six here. Probably a lot of Iowa fans in that game. Bucking a, an underdog trend on those Friday nights. I'll tell you what, you'll look back at UCLA and this guy like, I had, I, we were all UCLA under five and a half. Yeah. And then when it hit four after the whole Deshaun, Deshaun oh, the Foster. The big media day, yeah. I mean, he would thought a four. I actually bought some back over four. Like oh, if I can somehow get, I was going to say, if I, if I can get a, two more wins that you would assume maybe they should beat Fresno state. You and USC is a toss up. USC is a toss up this, this week. You, you go back and I mean, I don't think they'll win in Seattle. Like, no, Washington plays really to, well. I might, I might have to root against you this week. I'm sorry. Washington plays. Oh, for, oh, for your win to wait, you might have yeah. to root against me. Why you want you want to take? Why? Because I, I'm looking for five wins. Oh, you want five wins? I yeah. want five well, wins. So yeah, you get five. Fresno and USC. Those are your five wins. All right. They're, they're not going to win. They, they won't win at Washington. They should have won, you know, won that Minnesota game. That was yes. the game they absolutely yeah. should have won. That. And, and you look at their other four losses. They're all against top 15 teams. So, so maybe you maybe maybe UCLA is a little bit better than, than we may have thought. I don't know. They're, they're certainly playing better offensively, Bear, and they don't allow explosive plays on defense. It really helps them, in my opinion. So, if I'm a bucket trend, I'm going to be watching the U, uh, the Iowa game, UCLA game on my phone uh, at uh, at the Wake Forest Cal game. I'm so excited. Yeah, I was going to say you're you're going to watch. Uh... ACC rivals wait for us. I am. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. My wife invited me. She, I think I texted you like a month ago. It's like, my wife's going to an ACC game, Callan Wake. Uh, uh, good for her. And then she invited me. So I'm going to accompany her up the, up the triangle there. I'll watch a little Wake how football. Nice. How nice. What, 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 how many, what, how many, what, how many Cal Bear fans travel to a Friday night game at Wake Forest? 14. Yeah. I'll count them individually for you. I'll oh, let you know. Say, please, please do. Let, let me know. <laughs> let me know. If I might be over. I, I can't imagine. Uh, Berkeley to Winston Salem is a uh, highly sought after travel route. No, I can't imagine. Speaking of travel routes, we traveled all throughout the uh, the country and the college football landscape, and we've come to our conclusion. We've come to our end. Our journey is over. Appreciate everybody out there for uh, downloading and taking in our podcast wherever you consume your podcast: Apple, Spotify, wherever else. Subscribing to the Bear Tooth Bits YouTube channel. Sammy Will. Thanks again as always. You know where to find us. Wednesday college, Thursday NFL, Friday Bruce and the Bear. Study all guides early in the week. Picks are on, on oh, coming up over the weekend for myself, Will, and Sammy, and you as well. Foxsports.com. We're all over the place. We, 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 we litter the litter the landscape saturation there's no moderation here appreciate every single one of you as always and remember the less you bet the more you lose when you wait